So where we're going is, is back into the new make uh, um, uh, machining area. So the first thing is we had to put a wall down the middle. So we had to put a wall down the middle of the building and put all the equipment back there because the tolerances that we're trying to hold on some of the parts require us to maintain about plus or minus three degrees because the temperature variation beyond that will no longer allow you to hold the tolerance, especially the true position tolerance of the holes in the turbine wheels. So that's why the wall, it has its own air conditioning system, it has its own setup in there. So, so we'll walk through and have a look. So Pro Energy's made a huge investment in, in our expansion on our ability to make parts, right? Parts are obviously a, a constraint in any turbine overhaul, overall shop and you want to be able to make some of your own new parts. This is also an area where we can do some, you know, some repair machining as well. Um, for example, that laser weld that I talked about on the Z-notch, that laser weld could be done either in repair or in new make, right? And then the best way to finish machine that laser weld is with a creep feed grinder, which is back in the corner. So this area of the shop is actually rotor machining. So we have two large multi-axis wire EDMs, and then we have two more of, the, of those Mori machines. Now, these are different than the hybrid. So these are what are called a mill turn. So it can both mill and turn, which allows you to make rotor parts. So we can make turbine wheels, compressor wheels, the two to four spool, which is a multi-slot spool within the um, low pressure compressor. So all those can be made using these two wire EDMs and the two Mori's. The Mori's, you know, they have a large tool exchange. I think it's 130 different tools that we can, we can have in the automatic tool changer. And then we actually have a pallet changer in the front. So in the front of each of these, you can see the pallet and then you can see the door swing. So it just swung. And so the, the pallet just went in, so you can work on this pallet, prepping, and then swing a pallet in, and then have the machine ring. It takes 60 seconds. So your downtime, ideally, between machining and setup, can be as low as 60 seconds. Because you're setting up for the next one while it's machining the current one, and then it, the, this whole platform just rotates and the machine picks it up from there. So the 125, as I mentioned, 1.25 meters. This one's an 80. You can see the 80 up there, so it's 0.8 of a meter, right? And the, <clears throat> the reason to have, I was originally wanted two that were redundant, to give me redundant machining capability, everything else. But the reality of it is, is that if it's an 80 versus a 125, it has a little bit better um, accuracy or precision. And so because of that, to hold the true position on our low pressure turbine wheels, we need the 80 to hold that tolerance. So we're using, this machine can do the, the, um, the turbine parts, the low pressure turbine parts, and the 125 is big enough to do all of the low pressure compressor parts. So this machine can do most of them, but a couple have to be done over there. And that machine can do most of them, but a couple of the turbine wheels have to be done over here. So it's not fully redundant, but partially redundant. And this, you know, this is full five axis capability um, for, for turbine rotors specifically focused right now on the, the LPC and the LPT within the, within the gas turbine, okay? While we walk by, this is our GOM scanner. So this is a blue light scanner. It's fully robotic, fully automated scanner. It allows us to do manufacturing verification. So for every part that comes out of this new make shop currently, Right, once we build up statistics, but for now, every single part is being scanned. It's blue light scanned <coughs> and then compared to the, the drawing and or engineering model. And that enables us to very quickly identify any variation or any change in the machining process. Whether you have an issue with your machine, an issue with your tool, it will be identified very quickly as the parts flow through the blue light scanning capability. So the, the airfoil area, which is the balance of the shop, on the left side you see the, the six five-axis go mills. So these are Lecti go mills. These are for compressor blades. So some are set up for titanium, some are set up for stainless steel. This enables us to uh, five-axis machine or mill um, all of the compressor blades that we want. We start from a forging uh, normally, not from bar. 
but the forgings go in and then the machines cut them out. So they do all the rough cuts, all the finish cuts, the shaping of the, of the uh, leading and trailing edge as well as the dovetails. So it's all done in these machines. Again, we have six of them. Those six give us uh, uh, a significant capacity, but fundamentally where we are now, we're in production and we're improving our, our productivity and expanding on our shift time. So, you know, you start it an eight hour day, <laughs> right? And you, and you work through your procedures, you get your producibility up, then you start adding hours to the day and doing more and more runs, right? Because you don't, you don't want to do a mediocre process a lot. You want to get to a good process before you do, do it, uh, you know, full time. So we're still in those final development stages, always trying to get better, always trying to improve, but we're actually in production now of all of the uh, five stages of LPC blades, low pressure compressor blades. All five are in, are in production. <clears throat> so the three units over here, or on the right, these are creep feed grinders. So creep feed grinders are very different from, from a milling machine. I mean, first of all, they're a grinder, right? So we grind using grinding wheels. We also use diamond lap belts. And what we do is we grind on the high pressure or the um, turbine parts versus the compressor parts. So most of the compressor parts are millable. Um, you know, they're titanium, stainless steel, things like that, that you know, you can get a good cut out of, right, with a milling machine. In the turbine area, you have things like Rene 80, Rene 108, Rene 77, materials that are much tougher, but har harder, but also, you know, it's kind of a funny word, but kind of gummy, right? They're, they foul up the tools, they tend to break tools, they do things like that. So if you look at a, um, <clears throat> a turbine blade, right, what we finish, and this one's partially finished, so you can see some of the grinding in the, in the tip. So we'll go in there with a grinder and that shaped grinder will actually cut this to, to a high precision. So we'll do this, we'll do it, the, the seals. We'll also do the dovetail. This dovetail is the original cast dovetail. It hasn't been machined yet, but we'll machine the dovetail area, the platform area, as well as the tips and the Z-locks. As I mentioned in the other building, we also do the, um, we also do the, the grind of the, uh, of the laser welded hardened area in that Z-lock as well. So these grinding machines, it goes through a number of stages. You'll have different grinding wheels, different lap belts that you have to move between in order to do each of those functions. And that enables you, a creep feed grinder is a lot what it sounds like. The, it creeps, it moves very slowly and creeps in and the grinding wheel cuts to the shape and the precision you need. And that enables you to machine parts that would otherwise be very difficult to machine. You could mill them, to be totally honest. You'd break it, you'd wear out a lot of tools and, and break a lot of tools doing it. <laughs> and so the creep feed grinding is much more effective. We have three creep feed grinders. Um, that enables us to do all of the LPT blades and nozzles. So all five stages of blades and nozzles. Right now the machines are fully qualified on the blades. We're expanding to the stage one blades, not complete, and now we're moving into the nozzles. So soon we'll be able to creep feed grind all of the blades and nozzles in the LPT. Some of them for repair, and again, some of them for when we're making new parts from castings. So we have one more machine <laughs> that's still coming. <laughs> so we have our cleaning system here. Um, we currently have a, a, a manual uh, deburr area. We have a fully automated deburr uh, machine, which we're actually sending parts to the supplier, but that machine is on its way. It should be installed probably over the next two or three weeks in commission. Um, but that machine allows us to both automatic, automatically deburr all the parts, but also will automatically polish some of the parts. So it'll use its, its uh, deburring capability, sanding and, and, uh, and, and blending capability to then also polish the airfoils on some of the components as well. So that, that piece of equipment is currently operating at the supplier. We've already commissioned it to the supplier. It's in use. Um, while it's not in use today, it just got boxed up and it should be here shortly. So that'll be the last piece of equipment for this area. So this is our, um, this is our advanced machining center. <laughs>